And now, from beyond our dimension, this is the Jeff Mara Podcast. Here's Jeff. My guest is Kelly Bowker, author, channeler, and medium, who has gone from a small-town girl with fundamental Christian beliefs to a modern-day mystic who has now realized that both physical and non-physical beings from many realms and dimensions are part of her spiritual team. Kelly, thank you for joining me and welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Well, we're excited to have you. Kelly, let's start with your background and how you went from this fundamentalist Christian to a full-blown channeler. (laughs) It's been quite a journey. Um, I always, I've lived in this small town my whole life, and I've always been a very spiritual person. I've always, but the only spirit around here was the Baptist church. And so I was involved with that, which is very fundamental. And I was trained with a lot of dogmatic fundamental beliefs, um, which basically told me that anything, I wasn't even allowed to meditate because that was surrendering your mind and you shouldn't surrender surrender your mind because the devil could get you. We don't want the devil to get us. So we, we don't do that. So I had all that, that stuff that was part of me. And then as, as I grew and matured, you know, throughout my life, I knew that that dogmatic belief was not for me. I could feel the love of God, the love of Jesus in my heart. I could, I could connect to the Holy spirit and just feel my heart expand. And I knew that I was connected to a greater, a greater energy, a greater source, but I called it God. And I called it Jesus. And I called it the Holy spirit because it's all I knew to call it, but I could feel it. I always could feel that love connection, that beautiful, beautiful heart love connection. I got to the point where I was old enough and mature enough that the dogmatic rules and regulations and and biases I couldn't live with anymore. So I just, I branched away from that and I was floundering. And I found probably just about when most of you listeners did, I, I found The Secret. I watched that movie. And then I found Jerry and Esther Hicks, the Abraham, the group, and that is channeled information. And, um, it resonated so completely that I was finally able to let go of my fear around it. I had not one idea in the world that I would ever do this work. Um, I, I just knew that it resonated and I was letting go of my worrisomeness about it. Um, time went on and though I completely honor and am grateful for what I learned through the the Abraham group, there was something missing in it for me. I missed praying. I missed that day-to-day connection to source energy. And the stance of that is we create our own life. Well, if you create your own life, then who do I pray to? What, who am I supposed to pray to? I got I got very disconnected and very confused for some years. But I was very good at manifesting. I really was able to figure out the law of attraction because my heart was happy. My heart, you know, I was so able to connect to that higher vibration. Well, so time went on and I started to not be happy. The voice that's in my head that's always been a very happy voice. My cup's always been half full. The first chapter book I ever read was Norman Vincent Peale's power of positive thinking. That's been how I've lived my life. I, I've just always had that in as a part of my makeup. So, um, but all of a sudden, the normal things that worked for my happiness stopped working. I'd been married a long time, very happily married. My husband, Michael, is the love of my life. We just barely last week celebrated our 42nd anniversary, and we still have That's a great. wonderful marriage together. And thank you. And um, we, I just wasn't okay. I wasn't okay in my own skin. That's the only way I can, I can explain that is I just wasn't okay. And now looking back, I know that my guides were tapping, you know, they were tapping 
trying to get my attention. I started to get be sickly. I was every winter I was having different things and I had a one winter I had pneumonia and influenza and all oh, this is way pre covid and I I was really really sick and um my lungs were very depleted and I googled how do I build up my lungs? How do I strengthen my lungs? So I dive into the internet and I find Wim Hof, the Wim Hof breathing method. I'd never up to that point, I had never been able to meditate, but the Wim Hof breathing, I would, because it's hyperoxygenation followed by hypoxia, so you get that woo feeling. Well, I started to play with the woo feeling and I started to stretch that time. And that's how I began to learn to meditate. And then I found Joe Dispenza, which he's wonderful. I learned a lot through his books and, and teachings and whatnot. And so I was meditating, but I still was struggling with my health. I was I got diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. Things were going to crap with a couple of my kids. I just, there was stuff just kind of spiraling down. So I decided that I was going to have some counseling. So it would be two years ago this summer. I started, I had a beautiful lady uh, counselor that was wonderful. I did it via Zoom. And um, we started, I think, in June of that year. And we were going, and I think it was in November that she said to me one day, one day I shared with her strange things that were happening in meditation. In my meditations, I was feeling things. They were touching me. They were touching me, and I, I would. They would say, "I didn't, I didn't digest it as this at the time. I just would have a thought. Open your eyes, and I'd open my eyes, and I'd see an or, kind of a, an energy orb hanging there, and it'd be like whatever. I can remember looking at my arm. They said, "Open your eyes," and I looked at my hand, and my arm disappeared. I literally was looking at my arm, and it just disappeared crap you know <laughs> it was like wow so all these weird things these energy things were happening I didn't really understand them at the time but this is how things were progressing and my counselor said I want you to look up what it means to be an empath and I said to her I'm very empathic I'm a nurse I'm a teacher I taught the CNA the certified nursing assistant program for 23 years at our high school very empathetic no she seems to be an empath that dove me into the metaphysical side of the internet in a big way, unlike I'd ever done. And things around mediumship and all of these things just started to, to my guides truly led me from the perfect thing, boom, 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 boom. And they it just resonated. And I just knew this was part of my journey. While this was all going on, I had a friend whose daughter had passed away at 19 in a tragic accident. And she had said to me one day, she said, I would love to go to a medium. This was before any of this. She didn't know about any of anything. But she said, I'd love to go to a medium. And I said, well, why don't you? And she said, because I'm afraid God would be mad at me. And that just broke my heart. And so when I started to feel like I was on this precipice and the mediumship stuff started to, to sift to the top of, of the videos I was watching. I, I Now I know that her daughter was one of my guides and she was poking me and prodding me and getting me going. And we can now, I can look back and see how the different things that she facilitated so that I could help her mom. So I just, I, this was, that was in November. I found Suzanne Giesman, who was wonderful. Um, a wonderful teacher and very left brain in her in her most of her life. So she was very evidence based, which helped me to really let go of the final bit of fear and hesitation around all of this. And um, she introduced herself or, or got used to dealing with her guides through automatic writing. Well, I can't spell. And so I would get into a meditative state and I would try, I would start to write and I would feel it flow. I'd get to a word I couldn't spell and it would pop me out of my meditation. And back then it was tentative. It isn't anymore, but back then it was. So that wasn't working. Well, during my time with my counselor, I she introduced me to inner child work. 
and she wanted me to journal and the same thing happened. So I started to use my phone and use the demo thing on my phone and I would talk to my inner child and I did it verbally. So I'm meditating right along, watching lots of videos, learning stuff. And my husband goes away fishing for a weekend. So I have all kinds of time without interruption. And I think to myself, I'm going to just see what happens. So I lay my phone on my chest, turn on the video, the, the audio thing. And I just thought they, they told me what to do. They said, put, and I say to all your view, viewers who are trying to find this ability, put the engine in gear, put the engine in gear. Don't sit and meditate with your mouth closed. Start your mouth talking so that you can, you get it going and then they can take over much easier. So they had me kind of like chant, let the words come, let the words come, let the words come, step back, step back. At the time when I meditated, I would step into this space, this beautiful star filled night, night sky. And they said, step into your night sky, step into the sky. And I just kept kind of chanting things, working to move my consciousness out. And pretty soon my mouth engaged and I started to channel. And it was very weird sounding at the beginning. It's not now. You can, there's a cadence. You can tell when I'm channeling. It's different than Kelly speak. It's, uh, but it's not like that first time there was almost like a French accent, it sounded like. And I, on the different videos, they said, ask your guides their name. That was very nervous for me. I didn't like doing that, but that's what I was supposed to do. So I did. And they gave me La Cruz. Now, I do not speak French. La Cruz sounds French to me. And what it represents to me, I've never actually had anyone that speaks French tell me if it means anything. But what it represents to me is the cross. And when I was a little girl and I was very, very sad and lonesome, I had a, about a three-inch cross that I would hold to get to sleep at night because I was lonely and scared. And the that the energy was very familiar. I knew it had been with me my whole life. And I started by trying to ask a question out loud and then bring the channeling through. Well, that didn't work. And so they spoke in my mind and they said, ask the question silently and we will repeat it for your recording. And so I just would lay there and, and like I said, you know, what is your name? And they said, you have asked us what what our name is. We we will tell you La Cruz. And then it was like, you know, like, so whatever it was I asked. I just I asked a bunch of questions. And it was incredible. It, it blew my mind. And I will be honest and tell you that I don't know about other people's journeys. But for me, I kept thinking I was nuts. Am I making this up? Is this could this possibly be true? Can it be? Can I just truly talk to? At the time, you know, I, I thought of it as guides. And, and so in my mind, I, it would be angels and guides and my higher self, you know, all of that. Can I truly talk to them? And yeah, I really and truly could. And so that began my journey in March. Um, they told me I needed to tell my friends that I needed some people. I, I'd done enough just by myself. So I told my friends and they had people they loved that was on the other side. And so in my meditation that next morning, I asked their loved ones to give me some evidence. And I wrote it down, what they gave me. It was the first time I'd tried to do that. Pictures dropped into my mind. It was It, it was amazing. And I got the sense of things and the feeling of things. I'm like, holy cow, right? You know? And so I wrote it all down and I took it to school and I was right spot on. I brought through really, really significant things. And so that started to make me be like, wow, this is real. You know, holy crap, this is actually happening to me, right? Then my guides in a meditation said, you need to do your first mediumship in person, do your first mediumship. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm scared. And they said, well, you'd, they always would say, you don't have to do anything. You just bring us. That's all you have to do is bring us. And it's like, so I just would keep saying to myself, you bring them to the party, Kelly. You just bring them to the party. That's all you have to do. 
And that is all I have to do because Kelly doesn't know any of this stuff, but they do. So the morning came. My first mediumship was that afternoon. I wake up in the morning. I go down in, into my meditation room. I lay down and I just cry out to my guides. I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared. And I might have thrown a few F-bombs in there too. And they just basically, they just settled around me the way they do. Almost it feels like a hug. The energy just turned up. I could feel they're, they're holding me. And they gave me step-by-step -step instructions of what to do. They know me. I'm a teacher. I like checklists. I like to know I want to do it right. They gave me, you're going to enter the room, clear the energy of the room, ground your sitter ground yourself. I mean, boom, 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 connect your hearts. But I mean, they gave me step-by-step -step instructions and I did it. And I sat there with her and I was trying really hard to do it right. I now know that there's right looks lots of different ways, but at the time, the only model I had was Suzanne's model, which says you have to bring through evidence or you don't play. And so I felt this man pushing behind my face. I felt like Roger Rabbit. You know how Roger's face does that? I felt like Roger Rabbit, this pressure behind my face. But I'm inside and I'm going to do it right. And I'm saying to them, you have to give me evidence. You have to give me evidence. And finally, once we got going and I got my nerves settled, I brought through concrete evidence, beautiful evidence, things like, I saw an old fashioned water pump and she starts to cry. And I'm like, what's, what's up with the water pump? There's a water pump in the cemetery beside his grave. And she, that, that when he died, he, she used to pump the water and water his grave and cry and talk to him. And while she pumped the water. So it was very significant. And then I got out of the way and I let him talk and I didn't know that everybody didn't channel when they do uh, when they do mediumship. I thought that was it. I, I didn't know the difference. He spoke. He talked to her through me. He used some Kelly talk, some him talk. And it was awesome. It lasted for an hour. And there was the bell rang. We were in the school building. The bell rang. It didn't mess anything up. We had to get up and get tissues. I had snot. We were crying. I was crying. The snot was running. We had to get up and get tissues. So I'm thinking we're done. We're laughing and we're both going like, holy crap. Can you believe that this is happening? And I'm mopping my face up. And all of a sudden, that energy just whooshes me back. And I go, he's not done. He's not done. And I just, and then he started again. So this whole thing that I've seen on on videos and about like people talk about if you can hold the link, I think they call it. That's never been a thing. Holding the link just is there. The link is just there. And it's it's beautiful and it's amazing. And I'm humbled. And I ask myself all the time, why me? I, and they say, why not? So. That's through to channeling and mediumship. Kelly, thank you for sharing your life with us. When you are channeling and you are stepping back, are you still conscious of the of the conversation or you don't know until afterwards? Oh, no, I'm conscious of it. And it's really funny. On some of my YouTube videos, you'll see they'll be talking right along and they'll say something that Kelly is listening and it's like, and and there'll be like a holy shit and and it will just you can you can hear it's like Kelly speaks through for just a minute saying holy shit and then the the channeling keeps right on going it, it's it's kind of funny really um i've i've had times where when i'm when i'm working with someone else and they're answering asking the questions it's mostly been in i have a group of people that are helping me expand my abilities and so it's not a one-to-one -one where people are paying me to do it for for them I can completely just relax and let whatever's going to happen happen I call it my Monday group when he gets asking questions 
sometimes they, because the harder the question, the higher and the bigger, I guess, the energy that will come through. And sometimes it's pretty overwhelming, but I'm still, I'm still able to listen, but sometimes I'm so whatever that I have to listen back to the to the recording to get the message that's for me too you know i mean i'm learning right along with everyone else do you think the beings talk to your higher self and the information comes down from your higher self to you and you speak or are you like hearing it like as if you're clear audient or are these beings just taking over your body oh no i always have free will always always i I, we're very clear with each other on what I'm comfortable with and what I'm not comfortable with. Um, in the beginning, it came through pretty linearly. It was like, I know what they want to say. That's I get. So what's that called? Clear sentient, I think. I just, I know what they want to say. They might be showing me a picture and sometimes I have trouble finding the word that has the feeling of what they're trying to say. But usually in the beginning, it was quite linear. But then, and and things turn up, we definitely have to go through to last June when light language came through because that's when stuff really got interesting. <laughs> that's when things really started to get interesting. But um, up until light language, so for the first six months it was pretty linear and it would come through in a way that I could just kind of bring it through and it would make sense uh now I call it the pixie dust treatment because sometimes I will get hit with this wave I heard somebody on a YouTube video this week call it a, a knowledge bomb and that's kind of what it feels like it feels like, you know, the part of the movie when the hero is figuring everything out and it shows you all the pitches, boom, 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 as they like, they're putting it all together. That's what's going on in my head sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes uh, when they're, when it gets going too fast, like there's just this big download of knowing it's pictures and it's telepathy. It's like, boom. And, and I would, it would take me probably 20 minutes to sit and say what they just gave me, but it, but they gave it to me just like that. It is absolutely incredible. The first time it happened, the first time it happened, I was on the phone with somebody and they were talking doomsday stuff. And I started to get really uncomfortable because I'm very Pollyanna. I do not like to talk about negative stuff. I hung up, I started to feel really funny. My chest started to feel funny. My legs started to feel funny. So I just hung up the phone with her and I'm thinking, holy cow, I need a drink of water or something. I almost felt like I was going to have an anxiety heart attack or a heart attack. It felt really weird. I stand up and this wave of energy hits me like a friggin' tsunami. And I just twist and I fall. And thank God there was a couch right there. And I fall on my couch. My feet are on the on the floor. And this is going in my mind. And I'm just, my body is trembling and twitching and flexing and shifting. And, oh, it was just like, blah, just nuts. It was nuts. When it was over and it only took a few moments, I was like, oh, I get it. And they gave me, they gave me the knowings because I couldn't reconcile how can her reality be that we need to be putting by food and there's not going to be any food in the grocery stores and blah, 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 blah. And my reality be rainbows and unicorns. I couldn't, those two, re, those two things, Abraham Hicks said, you can't create for anybody else. And so it wasn't making any sense. How can I have my rainbows and unicorns and this person who's in the same world as me have Armageddon. How does that work? Then I knew. And they showed me, one thing they showed me was the universe filled with tinker toys. Do you know what a tinker toy is? 
Yes, the little of course. Round, mm -hmm. Yeah, the little round things with all the little coming out. Mm -hmm. it said the little round thing is the present moment. And all the little college sticks that come out from that are all the infinite possibilities of what your next present moment could be. Where are you vibrating? Where is your frequency? And that they said that she will have her life. She's on a timeline that will give her what she's creating. She will have a version of me. She's probably bringing me food and taking care of me because she loves me. But I don't, my consciousness is over here on this timeline with the rainbows and unicorns. And all of a sudden, I just knew that that was possible. And I knew that it was true. So that's. That's kind of how the information comes through. Now you live in a small town and gossip travels fast in small towns. So how did the town react to you being a channeler? So fast, so good. Mm, that's I good. I had a couple of friends that I know are staying away from me because it, it challenges their religious belief too much. Um, I have family members that I'm sure... Pray for me daily to get me out of hell. Hmm. But I, that's okay because I know my truth. And my what I know is that they're okay and I'm okay. And I know they love me and they're worried about me and their their views are. And that makes me feel a little bad. It makes me feel sad for them. But it's okay. I, I, I have, I'm a 60-year-old woman. My feet are firmly on the ground. And I'm not put on this earth to convince anybody of anything. If you had told me this stuff two years ago, I'd have told you you had rocks in your head. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have believed a goddamn bit of it. I wouldn't have. How does this happen to this crazy retiring nurse? Normal, like I said, swears like a parrot, drinks like a fish. How does it happen for me? I don't know, but it has. And so I just, I speak my truth. I just speak my truth. And I think that because I, I do believe that we are made of frequency and I think my frequency is, is love. And I think people, when they talk to me, they feel that. And so, so far, so good. I Telling don't, my husband has been fun. Yeah, I bet. I don't know if at your congregation they would speak in tongues, but if they did, how would you compare speaking the light language to speaking in tongues? In my early 20s, I went to a Pentecostal church and I got, they, in their words, it's being slayed in the Holy Spirit and I spoke in tongues. I was able to pray in tongues at that time. It is the same thing. It is frequency. Light language is frequency. Light language carries codes and knowings. And so let, let me tell you about light language. Because that's really, like I said, that's when things, if, if you think up to this point is, is wild, when light language comes through, things really got hairy. So I am meditating last June doing my thing, channeling like I do almost every day, bringing through whatever message that they wanted to, to give me for the day. And all of a sudden, it started at my feet. My feet started to, to kind of tremble. My legs started to contract and tremble. I can remember like bringing my knees up to my chest, kind of to my chest and flexing down and just like uh, the energy was just more than what, way, way more than what my body was used to. This, so this big wave of energy, and I'm I'm in my head going, holy crap. But I mean, in my life up to this point, a lot of weird things have been happening. So, you know, what's happening today? Who knows? And all of a sudden, instead of speaking English words, my hands start to gesture and the light language starts to fly. And I'm in my mind and I'm, I said, O-F, 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 okay? I just... And, and I, and I, in my mind, but my mouth is going with light language. My hands are going and my mouth is going with light language. And I'm in my head and this all is telepathy. It's split second. I go, I'm scared, I'm scared, I'm scared. And I feel them pull around me 
they pull completely around me. I can remember feeling them even on the sides of my legs, but they left the channel up the front of my body open. And they said, then stop. And I'm still going. And in my mind, I say, is this for my highest good? And they said, yes. And I said, okay, if you say so. And I just kept going. It was about nine minutes. I didn't listen back to it. No, I did listen back to it. The, at the very end, the only English words that I spoke was, so I can talk to my brothers and sisters. Because I'm in my head going, I don't understand what's happening, what's happening, what's happening. And then I speak, so you can talk to your brothers and sisters. Well, that freaked me out. What exactly are you mean? And I'm going to be talking to my brothers and sisters. Well, I got brothers. They speak English, last I knew. What's this about? So I got scared and overwhelmed. And I basically folded my arms and I didn't talk to anybody for about a week. I didn't meditate. I didn't channel. I didn't, I, it was too much. I then meditated a little bit and started to ask questions. What is this? What does it mean? What is it about? And they started to drop different kinds of videos, your kind of videos. Dolores Cannon. Oh, God, they, do, they dropped a Dolores Cannon one on me. I didn't talk to them for another week because it was just too much. It scared me. I, I, was, I was too unsure of all of it. But with light language comes knowings. And so... I would bring through light language. I didn't understand this is what was happening at the time, but I'd bring through light language and then it would it was almost like it took a layer of gauze off my eyes and I could see more of the truth. And it was, and it was like, okay. And I just, I knew then, I knew then that there was an extraterrestrial component but I couldn't talk about it and I couldn't think about it. When I would get nervous around it, they would always bring me back to the present moment. They would say, honey, you know, they basically would say, Kelly, the present moment, come to the present moment, feel the love. Because when I connect with them, it is just pure positive love energy. It's beautiful. They said, if this is getting too much for you, just, just come back to the present moment. Now you're starting to see orbs, right? And possibly ships. Well, yeah, I kind of think so. I kind of think so. So, so that I went over the winter. Yeah. Went over the winter, learning more all the time, bringing more light language through every time you hear light language, you expand. If you want to, you have to say, yes, we have free will. But if you want to, it it teaches you, you, you just all of a sudden, it's like you just, you, you are talking about something and you're in your head and you're like, how do I know that? But you just know it. You just know it. it, it it's incredible. So light language brings through these frequencies. Now I'm beginning to learn that it's the frequencies that can actually activate that dormant DNA that we all have. That DNA that holds within it all the different abilities and stuff. This is a whole, this is like literally just coming to me in the last couple of weeks. And I'm like, okay, I'm, I understand. I get it. So I'm just, I'm just riding the wave. I'm just riding the wave. But so at the, I think it was about last March, Mike and I are getting ready for bed. And he looks across, he can see out his window and he sees a weird light above the horizon. And I had watched a movie, you know, again, you know, inviting more information in, getting, this is how they worked with me. They had me watch this thing and then that thing and just it slowly but surely taking away that fear. Well, it was the lady that has got like 30,000 hours of clips of, of UFO stuff. I don't know if you've ever seen her documentary, but. What's her name? I can't remember. It was, I think it was on Netflix. It, she's an older woman now. She has all of this old footage. She started videotaping the sky years ago. And mm. she's got literally like 30,000 hours wow. of these 
incredible light things that are going on in the sky. So, but she said when she was being interviewed on this on this documentary, she said the human eye can't see it. So if you see something that looks weird to you, grab a camera because your camera will pick it up. So Michael sees this light on the horizon and I run out into the kitchen, go out onto my deck and I click, click, click. And I get two pictures and I zoom in on these pictures and what I saw that just was no explanation for. And Michael looked at me and he goes, they're not going to come take your way, are they? And I said, trust me, honey, I've made a deal with them. If they take me, I have, they have to bring me back. Because that was my fear. That's why I wouldn't connect. That's why I held them at arm's length is because I was afraid that they, they might take me and keep me. And maybe they'd take me and I'd want to stay. I don't want to do that. I love my husband. I love my family. I want to live out my life here on earth. And so when I was just rewind just a little bit last October, I channeled Mother Earth. One day I had this incredible experience where this energy bu bubbled up through me and she identified, I don't, up until just the last couple of months, I haven't really been able to say that this is this entity and this is that entity. But on this day, she comes up through my, right from my core and she identifies herself, I am Mother Earth. And I am crying. I've got it, I've got it recorded. It, it's in my, I think I transcribed it into my second book. But she said to me that I had to work on my relationship with her. I'm too esoteric. I've always been too spiritual from my heart up. And she said, I had to connect to my chakras from my heart down to connect to her and create that good, solid grounding. Once I started to do that kind of work, then the angel team came through. That's a whole other story. I mean... I have a whole team of nine angels that came through by name and helped me write my second book. Well, let's take a look at some of the pictures and video you okay. have. Okay, so this big light down here is a birch tree that's on my lawn that has twinkle lights on it. This is the horizon, and this is what caught Michael's attention, this big light right here. But when I, this is one picture that I took, and I noticed these three strange glowing things off to this side. So this is two pictures. I took them back to back. So this is the picture. This is the second picture, the first one I showed you. And then this is the second one. And so then the, the next pictures I'm going to show you are zooming in. So this is what the bright light, look how square it looks. This is the bright light that's on the top of the horizon. Mm -hmm. And in the second click so it's click click in the second click this is what it looks like the square has turned into this weird shape and spitting something out and then you have this disc looking thing so that's what was over on the side of the mountain and then these there were three of these in the first picture so this is one of them there's the two now, this is just what I could see in the sky in the first picture, and I zoomed in and I took a screenshot of it. This is the two, and there but there was three of them, so here's the other one. So that was the first clip of the three things on the, on the right-hand side, and then on the second, this is what they look like. It, it looks to me, on that, on that, square thing that then morphed you could see the energy you could see the energy of that thing spitting out of it this is an energy this looks solid to me and then here are the two so though all three of those turned into these things and I, they're just i just i didn't have any way to explain it do you think it's possible that those whatever they are, are moving. And those are like trails of light. I have no idea. I have no idea. I know I've never seen anything. This was my first experience that made me feel like I was on an experiential journey with these beings. I still had fear. 
But by this time, I have I had channeled Mother Earth. I had been practicing my grounding. I felt much more connected to the earth. I felt much more confident in my abilities. So I was not nearly as afraid. And then, so let's see where are we at. And so this is like back in March. Um, the channeling is just continuing to happen. I around that same time is when I had my first interview and that generated a lot of buzz and I, I got to do a lot of one-to-ones with people and every time I did a one-on-one -on -one with someone I channeled and let them ask questions I was getting better and better I was getting clearer and the the richness of what was coming through was just getting more and more I didn't know what I could do until mm -hmm. I tried to do it my hubby and I and my daughter and her boyfriend had been out playing and drinking quite frankly on the lake most of the day so I was definitely under the influence in this. I get a nudge and they, I pick up my phone and I start taking pictures of the clouds, which as you can see are not particularly pretty. I, we have beautiful sunsets on my lake. The next day after this happened, I called my daughter and I said, why did I pick up my phone? What, what was I taking a picture of? And she goes, mom, I don't know. All of a sudden you just picked up your phone. So even though I was having cocktails, I still felt that nudge. They nudged me to take a picture of the sky, and I did. And when I took the first picture, I saw that little dot, and I saw this dot moving. And I said in my mind, I'm trying to tell myself this isn't real. And so I said, it's got to be some kind of a, it's a reflection of the sun. And in this particular video, it shows that they come down next to my boat. So I'm not looking up into the sky at it anymore. I'm looking down into the water and they're popping up and they're playing with me. They're, mm. they're peeking at me and then they go down and they're peeking again. So, you ready? Go. Yeah, so I'm just looking for it now. I videoed it. Couple of times and now again. Wow. And there it is. Oh my gosh, there it is. All right, seriously, it's got to be some kind of reflection. Oh my God, look at this. Right next to the boat. <laughs> so. All right. I don't know if I saw anything. You're going to have to tell me what to look for. Okay. I'll show you. And where should I be looking at? It's, it's going to be down here at the bottom. You watch and I'll, I'll turn it on to this side. Oh, my God. Look at this. Right next to the water. There it is right here. Oh, my gosh. There it is. See it? Oh, yeah. So it, it peeks in and up and it, I wish that I had, I'm, I'm just over the edge of the frame is just oh over the side of the boat next to the boat. and it's going down. So I can't see it and it's peaking and it's going down. So I can't see it and it's peaking. So it's underwater. It just, plays, it just plays with me, but no, 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 it didn't go. Well, no, I don't believe it went underwater. It went, I I'm in a party boat. Party boat has probably a three foot side on it and it comes right up to the side of my boat. So it goes out of my vision. It's, it's going along beside us and then it pops up so I can see it. Then it goes down again. So, and it, so it comes in and out of view like that. It's playing with us. Are you seeing it with your naked eye or you only see it like as you're through your camera? I'm seeing it. I saw it through my camera. Hmm. I we, none of us could see it through our naked eye, but Miranda could see it through my camera too. She, well, I mean, you can, you know, people can see it. And it isn't that the video is all that spectacular, but when I froze the frame, let's see if I can find that picture that I sent you. When I froze the frame and, um, took stills of it. So this is that, this is the still that, the lady took all the light out of it. And she said that when you take all the light out of a picture, the picture goes black because 
it's light bouncing off, but this didn't go black. Perhaps part of the thing is, is that there was also what I was feeling when I saw it. Though I had amazement, I had a knowing. I just, I had a knowing. Kelly, thank you for sharing those pictures and the video with us. Would you like to channel for us? I would love to. I would love to. Um, the, I want to share one last thing, though, about that, that orb. Following that weekend, when I had my Monday group, I had my friend, Graham, ask, I said, when I get channeling, ask about the orb. And that was when, that was the first time that I felt like it was a very pure, I believe that the extraterrestrials blend with the energies Anytime I'm channeling, this time it felt like it was all them. There's been a few times that it has been all them. This particular time it was all them. And they said, when I looked into that orb, I knew I had a sense of knowing and I did. I was freaked out, but I did have a sense of knowing. And that's when they explained that they're part of my guides and that the light language facilitates it and that we are basically family, we're all one. And we know that we're all one. That's not a question. But what we just haven't wrapped our, our human minds around is that we're all one beyond just the souls of the humans on this planet and the humans on this planet. We are all one throughout all galaxies. We are all one and it's all love. So yeah, that's the message. The, and the other big message is they have been so gentle with me. They have been so kind and so loving and so gentle and brought me forward just so easily, even though it's been fast because it's only been, this whole thing has only been a year and a half. All of these different knowings coming through, but they still have done it in a way that kept this 60 year old woman from going, you know, freaking out. Not that I didn't have my moments, because I did. But most of the time, I felt, I always felt in control. We have free will. I can say no anytime I want to say no. They've started working with me at night. They they start That started at the beginning, and I said, I don't want my sleep messed with. My sleep's important. And so they didn't for a long time. And then this summer, they said, you're missing out because you're not letting us talk to you in the night. And I said, is it for my highest good? And they said, yes. And so now they're they're doing things at night. They're waking me up. They're showing me things. I'm seeing energies and who knows what's coming. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's coming, but stuff's coming every day. Well, do you need to prepare to channel in any way? Let me just take a couple of breaths. Okay. I just breathe into my heart with gratitude. Connect to Mother Earth. I'm just so thankful in this moment for this wonderful opportunity. We invite you, dear ones, to say yes within your hearts to the language of light. May all the cells of your body, may your heart, may your whole being accept the blessing of the light language. We are pleased, dear ones, with this interaction tonight, as you have given an opportunity for Kelly to speak about what she is so very excited about. It has been a very remarkable journey, has it not? Things have moved quickly for her, and she would like to say she has been greatly in control. And she has. It is important to note that the human has free will. But we would say that her 
yearning in her heart for more has trumped, we would say, her fear. It has been quite easy for us to bring her along to the knowings of her intergalactic family. She has family members in many different dimensions and many different realms. And we all come through to her when she opens her channel and allows the information to flow. When a question is asked, we have taught her to reach far as she can, reach across dimensions, reach across timelines, incarnations, and realms. This is how the frequency can come through and all the beings who are so very interested in the evolution of your planet is able to bring through messages and knowings to facilitate this transformation. This is an exciting time, is it not? Would you have any questions for us at this time? First of all, am I speaking with LaCruche? Remembering that we are all one, dear one. The energy that she br brings in and brings through is going to come in at the frequency that is needed for the frequencies of the questions that you are preparing. La Cruz has been with Kelly from the time that she began her journey in this incarnation and many, many other incarnations. It was a very familiar energy. If we had come through her feeling the way her body feels in this moment, it would have been very frightening to her. She has learned that this is just a purer, mm, we do not like the word higher, it is not higher. There is not that kind of um, judgmenty kind of ideas where we are coming from. We would maybe say evolved. It's close enough. Then La Cruz. How? We have much more intergalactic energy. La Cruz has a large component of the Christ consciousness, which was very, very familiar to Kelly. How did you locate Kelly to be a vessel for your channeling? Your planet is changing. Your planet is changing by the millisecond. You are very aware of this, as are many. We watch closely, and we are very involved in the development and the personal evolution of each individual human. We wait for the frequency to be harmonious with that which is us. Kelly was seeking. She had a very open heart and an open mind, though she might argue with us about that. And there are many on this planet at this time who are also seeking. I believe you would say you are very aware of the uptake, we would say, of people with similar 
mm, abilities as this one has. We come forth to facilitate the human race as Mother Earth together with the all expands and the frequency raises. There needs to be those who are the way showers. Kelly doesn't quite know what that will look like for her, but she is open and she wants to be of service. It seems to me that you are part of a collective. Where are you from? This is a difficult thing to bring through this vessel. Her language is not such. And being a conscious channel, we must utilize her language to bring forth the message. We would say this is an answer for that question. We are indeed a collective. We are a collective of Pleiadians, Arcturians, Mantis, many, many beyond what this one has the words to even describe. There are many physical and non-physical beings in this dimension and in many dimensions. We come into and out of your current most Oh, I don't know the word. The third dimension, the reality that, that is your now. We are able to step in and out. That is how we keep ourselves hidden to the degree that we do. We have planets in many galaxies beyond what your human mind would even be able to understand. And the galaxies are throughout the dimensions and realms and even incarnations as well. We would bring back the knowing and discussion around time. Time is only a construct of the humans on planet Earth as a linear thing. Time is all now. All incarnations are now, all possibilities and probabilities and timelines are now. So when you ask where we are from, we are a makeup. Um, she's thinking Star Trek and, and searching for that word, the Intergalactic Federation made up of many beings from many, many, many realms. And we have joined as we facilitate and interact with the human race. We are benevolent beings who have great fondness for the human experience. And we are very not concerned, but interested in the development of the human species. You are at an incredible time, my friend. In this time, there is the trajectory of the timeline that has within it these knowings and frequencies and awakenings. Many of you are stepping into this flowing between the third and the fifth dimension of understanding. This is a, a wonderfully exciting time for your planet in this dimension and this timeline at this moment. So it is a very convoluted answer to a very simple question for that we apologize. But we would also add in 
that we are not all physical beings. Many of us are able to interact from a non-physical standpoint as well. This is a, an incredible understanding for the human. Do you have a specific message for humanity at this time? Oh, that's a big one. Zikira Kataromo Ono Katarki Katar Zikatar Mana Ana Ana Uno Katarkiata Oskototi Katar Atar Kotokotera Mayat Tikiar Katatus Kotarki and Nanang and Nudo Kotier Kazakatar Kutu Zikiar Katar Kiat Kunumadan Yana Kotodo Kiar Katar Kiat Toto. As a Katariat Toto Makata Ataki Katara Makoto Okoturu Yakta Zikatar Kumatar Kiatata. The human would prefer it to be a very much more complex answer than what we will give you. We teach through this one the magic of the present moment. Because if the human can master their minds to be present within the present moment, this is the only moment in time that you have. We have said this through many, many channels up to this point, but you do not get it. You came to the earth with the experience of the egoic brain, and you must learn to have dominion over that egoic brain. There are many tips and tricks and hacks to do this. We have given this one many she put into her second book. It is truly as simple as settling into the vibration of wondrous anticipation. Wondrous anticipation of what is coming. We have shown this one her body in time, and she sees shards of light coming out, infinite amounts of shards of light coming out from her body in this present moment. Each shard of light is a timeline where she and you are vibrating, where your frequency is is the timeline that you are on. There is the timeline, dear one, that this planet is headed to the awakening, to the oneness, the remembering that you are one with all. You are remembering, dear one. Our message is, Work on your frequency. Bring the timeline that has that beautiful nirvana of love and oneness and grace. That is a potential. There are many, many, many infinite potentials. This is not new information. But we come wanting to just say it through this one in whatever way we can to help light the way. And if she can tell the story of her relationship with us, being what she would describe as a down-to-earth, very simple woman, and we giving her, we have given her these knowings and these perspectives of life that she shares with people. That is what it is all about, is shining a light for as many of you as are willing 
to turn your face towards it, to take away from the fear. We told this one one day, the conversation that happens in the grocery store is as important as this interview that could potentially reach thousands of people. It is living and shining your light of knowing that we have, we are one with this intergalactic family, that there are so many benevolent beings who are very interested and are helping the humans on their journey. All you have to do is feel the nudges, listening to your inner voice. That is as simple as it is, and yet as complex as it is as well. Well, what is the best way for us to raise our frequency? There are many ways. There are many ways, dear one. Oh, okay, we're getting some angel, angel vibes happening. Give me just a minute. Ooh, I love the angel energy. It's beautiful. It makes me cry. I'm asking which angel wants to speak. Yes, dear ones, it is I, Angel Ariel, who would take a moment to speak to this group, to add our angelic energy into the collective mix, if you would. And it will have a wondrous magnetic ability to draw in those who need to hear it. I am Angel Ariel, the angel of knowing, the connection, the angel of oneness between the human and the all. We would ask for you to please repeat your question, as this one has been a bit overwhelmed. What is the best way for us to raise our frequency? We would take this opportunity to speak of the chakra system as we have been training this one over these last months. When we first came to Kelly, I explained to her that when humans came and were populated upon this planet, they were given a vast amount of emotions, the whole spectrum of emotions to contend with, and many other agreements that you are aware of, time and space, duality, good and bad, those such things. When the emotional continuum was decided upon, a decision was made to gift the humans with the chakra system, which is an energy system that will help facilitate the human in dealing with emotions. This one, in all of her seeking, in all of her reading and learning throughout all of her years of her life, never resonated with the chakra system. We kept tapping her and throwing it into her path, and she would just go her merry way the other direction. But we now have her attention. There is a team of angels that is associated with the chakras. We came through to Kelly. We have come through to others. We gave her, each of us in our way, building one upon the other, gave her tools to do exactly what you are describing. 
there is an energetic circuit. We use the word circuit because it is a flow of energy that comes from the human's chakra system, goes to eternity into the cosmos, releasing all that does not serve, picking up the codes and the frequencies that are needed and transforming that which can be transformed. It, the energy loops back and comes through in the beautiful infinity sign. It cycles through the human's energy system and it goes down into the infinity that is Mother Earth. And it releases and it picks up the codes and it picks up the frequencies and it transforms what can be transformed. This is happening throughout the entire chakra system. And it's happening whether you know that it's happening or not. This was the gift to help the human manage their frequency. But when you add your intention, when you utilize the frequency of color, when you utilize saying the name of the angel that is associated with that particular chakra, when you utilize tones, all of these things we have been giving to Kelly and bringing it together for her to share, this is why she is now comfortable with her knowings because she is working with her chakra system. She is cleaning and tending to it and balancing it. And now there is a purity that allows that vibrational resonance so the knowings can come through. We invite you all, dear ones, to make friends with your chakra system, to see it as a living, breathing energy being because it is. It is the, the key between you and the cosmos, between you and what you would call across the veil. Utilizing the chakra system is what will help humanity raise their frequency. Would you ask us anything else? Are there any extraterrestrials walking around on planet Earth currently? Oh, the energy is shifting. <laughs> Indeed there are. Indeed there are. It is an amazing thing. And it is more than this one probably will be able to put into words succinctly, but there are many, many humans who are star seeds whose lineage comes much more strongly from other places than from this planet. There are many interdimensional beings who, who, are, give me just a minute. There are many, come on, come on. There are many interdimensional beings that can step in and out with ease and facilitate and work with and help. This is not a bad time for us to bring up that there are those mischief makers as well. Not all physical and non-physical beings are benevolent. It is not anything to be nervous about, only we have said to this one, to have your normal common sense about things. When you have 
put yourself to in the frequency of love and light, there can be no darkness. But however, when life is busy and there are lots of distractions, sometimes the human will push past their gut reaction and go in a direction that is not for their highest good. We would just say to you all, in the same way that this one does not walk away from her grocery cart and leave her purse, you just have an awareness that when that feeling is there, it is us telling you that you want to go this direction, not that direction. And you listen. It is not anything to be of great concern about, but there is the potential for mischief making and th that which is not pleasant. And this one doesn't concern herself with that, but it is part of the teaching that needs to come forth. Again, we would say normal, common sense kinds of behaviors, listening to one's internal dialogue, internal knowings, don't push past your gut. When your inner voice says no, it is no. Thank you. Is that I'm not sure if that answered or not. I was going to say thank you for your answer, and I have no more questions. Wow. Hey. Whew. That was fun. That was great fun. Hey, Kelly, after watching this podcast, people may want to reach out to you and ask you questions. Are you open to that? Absolutely. I do I do one-to-one -one sessions. I have I have on Facebook, I have a page called Kelly Boker Medium, and it has a link to a thing to make an actual appointment with me. Um, I invite people to friend me on Facebook, Kelly Newt Boker. I, I love to have people friend me. Um, my email address is kellyboker7 at gmail.com. Send me an email if the times don't work out and we need to set something up. Or if you just have a simple question, people put lots of questions under my videos on my YouTube channel. My YouTube channel is called Present Moment Magic. And I put lots of free content out there, lots and lots of content. But I love to do groups. I love it when girls, particularly when women gather together and they bring me in and everybody gives like a little bit of a donation and and I get to be part of the party and they ask the guides questions and stuff. That's a lot of fun. So I'm I'm open to all kinds of different things. Um, you mentioned that you have books. What are the titles and where can people find out more about them? Oh, thank you for asking. My first book is called um, Redefining Faith. And boy, that's the truth of my journey. Uh, I self-published. It's on Amazon. And uh, my second book is the one that Angel Ariel came through. And there were nine angels that came through that gave me the second, well, it was probably the last third of the book. Um, each angel, they came through and they said, each, each of these angels will come through and write a chapter of your book. And I basically had an energetic anxiety attack. I was I, I, there was no way I thought it could happen, but they were good to their word and they did. And they build on each one of them gives a little bit of that circuit that now I understand it, what, what, they, what they're talking about and, and the importance of our chakra system and running that energy. Oh, so yeah, both on Amazon. All right. Well, before we finish up, can you leave us with one last positive message? Hmm. We are all one. We are all perfect in this moment. We are so loved. When I connect to this energy, be it the swaggery, and you can feel the different you know personalities that come through, be it that swaggery kind of telling you in your face, 
ET person that came through or that beautiful, beautiful, loving energy of Angel Ariel. They all love us and they care about us and they're helping us on our journey and they want us to have everything in the world that, that we want and they're here to help us. And so establishing your frequency is the name of my second book. And it is all about how to navigate, how to navigate day-to-day -day life without letting it throw you off kilter. And when it, when it does throw you off, which it's going to bounce back quick. And that's all there is to it. You know, we're loved. Kelly, thank you for your message. And thank you for being my guest. This has been a pleasure, Jeff. Thank you so much for having me. I can't tell you what it means to me. Thanks for watching the Jeff Mara podcast. I really appreciate you. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. And if you do, there are loyalty badges and other perks depending on your level of membership. All you need to do is click the join button underneath the video to find out more. Thank you for your support.